but all right, everybody. So welcome to Carbonite Bounty BS, the show where we talk about uh, Mandalorian on Disney Plus. I'm Scott. Sam. Tony. Ken. Ken's got and a he's wicked. Ken. Ken's and he's got Ken. a wicked. <laughs> right? uh, welcome everybody. Uh, for those of you who have. <laughs> Uh, never joined us before. You're in luck, and for those of you who are coming back, we're sorry. Uh, Sam, Sam, before we get into the brass tacks here, why don't you go ahead and tell everyone where they can find us? All right, make sure that you guys are going to our website, nerdcyclopedia.com. That's where you see all our links, all our video stuff, you know, all our articles related on nerd culture. Make sure that you are subscribing to us right now if you're listening. I mean, if you're watching and listening, you know, Make sure that you go ahead and subscribe. Um, make sure that you're following us on all our social media outlets, Twitter, um, ah, Facebook, and also Instagram at Nerdcyclopedia. And make sure that you're also leaving us some feedback at nerds at nerdcyclopedia.com. Awesome, awesome. Definitely mash subscribe. We're going to be here. We have other shows, including uh, Sam and Scott are watching Watchmen. Uh, so check out our channel. Our channel is rad. Um, that is my official ah, statement is that it is woo. rad. All right, guys. Man. So we're here to talk about the Mandalorian, and we're going to more specifically talk about this episode. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, the domination of the internet by a certain tiny Yoda esque character, Tony. I don't want to start any trouble. Oh, Sorry, okay. I just I just, I just want to put the disclaimer out there. <laughs> I'm getting used to it. <laughs> um, it's too, you can't fight the world. So yeah, <laughs> you can't fight the world, Tony. You can't fight the world. Uh, so, so this is a really this is a great episode uh, of TV. Um, uh, thank you for Ken to Ken uh, earlier for calling out which Clint Eastwood movie this was. It's Pale Horse. Uh, oh, okay, okay, okay. I didn't see you guys texting and everything, yeah, yeah, yeah. so that's what so that's the reference Clint was. Movie okay, we did this week. And, and this is a show that for me is starting to feel like, you know, movie of the week or uh, a little episodic, which makes me think it's got legs. Right. And as we all know, it, yeah, with the main yeah. character, because we know the real protagonist of this, uh, this show is not the Mandalorian. It is baby. Why? Uh, I mean, that's a long way of being. Right, we right, got right. plenty of time for stories. Uh, the baby Y Chronicles. So I'm, uh, I'm stoked to see, uh, to see that happen uh before we jump in let's go ahead and uh do first impressions i kind of gave mine sam what, what did you think of this episode oh, i thought it was it was good it was very 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 good the um you know at the beginning where a any parent can relate to a hard-headed kid you know you tell them not to touch something you know yeah. and they still go ahead and touch you know and um after you tell them one time they go back again <laughs> and still try to touch you know, I can just so relate to, to that aspect. So, but the overall episode was great. Um, you know, Gina Carano, you know, she came in there and, um, you know, was, was, was going back and forth with, with, mm -hmm. with our, with our hero Mando. So it was great to see her and, um, yeah, just action sequence really, at really the end awesome. was very good. Uh, Tony, what'd you think? You know what? And I'm just going to, I don't want to be, and I don't want to pretend that we're going to love every single thing and everything yeah. is incredible and everything is awesome. This is probably my Ooh. least favorite episode. Ooh. And I'm going to tell you why is okay. that fact. Now, I'm just going to say, like, you know, of course, from Boba Fett, from the, I just want Mando to be up <laughs> all the time. Just shoot him up. Just, he's yeah. just, he's a bounty hunter. He is awesome. This whole human side, like, oh, thank you. Oh, you know what I mean? Now there's, like, a lot of humanity there. I mean, it's, like, it's, I'm just, I just wanted to be an <laughs> awesome bounty hunter. But I see where this is going, though. I mean, we're building a character, so I'm not saying I didn't enjoy the episode. I say it's my least favorite. So it's kind of like your least favorite ice cream. It's still great ice cream. Hey, still... It's just not my favorite ice cream. So, well, I could I I could, I could tell you one thing, um, Tony. If I get a lot more, um, Baby Y, you know, because they're leaning into Baby Y more and more each episode. Mm -hmm. I'm like, okay, mm, um, hope the next episode is. Ken, <laughs> what did you y think? Century. What did you think about this episode? Uh, actually, I agree with uh, both Sam and Tony in uh, a lot of aspects, but this one personally is my favorite so far. I like the beginning and the <laughs> middle and the end. How it's just a nice little package. That's his favorite part. Uh, the complete package. I feel like uh, everything. And 
but I, I, but to Tony's point, mm-hmm. I understand what he's getting at. Like Boba Fett is my favorite in all the right. Star Wars universe. Boba Fett, badass. Don't mess with him. Takes down anybody. Bounty hunter. Now, here's the thing. The Mandalorian, Mando, is not right. quite full bounty hunter, right? As we're kind of coming out with it. He's right. sort of pushed into it. It became his uh, It became yeah. his, his uh, destiny, not his choosing. So he came from a very, very peasant-like background, and he became a bounty hunter. So he's still kind of human. So... And I like the I love the relationship between the child, yes. officially called the child. By well, Disney. let's uh, and let's all recognize our overlords with the mouse ears because they are the arbiters of canon and our life right. of death for us. They are in charge of all. So, relationship that's building between the child and Mando, I think, is gorgeous, and I can't wait to see how this all plays out in the next. Uh, so awesome! Episodes. Very cool. Now, my impressions, even though I already gave you some. Uh, I thought right. that, you know, there's a tr- these are Western tropes or samurai tropes where there is this quiet place. It's even in the last samurai with Tom Cruise to tell you how, you know, prevalent that trope is. It's in everything. Uh, you know, I talk a lot about how it's Western Eshkin. We'll get into that in a, l- in a little bit. I thought that the we're finding out that while the Mandalorian may have armor of Beskar steel, he has a heart of gold. <laughs> so so let's talk about that let's talk about the uh the oh, opening boy. portion of this piece here and that is of course the the cold open that we get with baby yoda just being cool uh it's kind of another another we get these memories of mando and baby and baby you know the child or baby whatever we're gonna call it uh we get these these little snippets of their life uh, i just think it's sweet i just think it's really cool um you can't yeah. i mean I, I, don't, I think that it's going to be a minute before Baby Yoda gets, uh, you know, annoying. First of all, he's going to have to have lines to get annoying. Uh, you know, it's like uh, <laughs> I, it's on film, on film, film, mm-hmm. there's not a huge difference between <clears throat> characters that are dogs and tiny children. I mean, quite frankly, right? Because they can't talk. Uh, and nobody wants to kick a dog, right? No one wants to do that. <laughs> No, no. Exactly, wants Sam. To kick a and child Sam, either, thank you, you again know. for bringing up that we are very pro children and babies. We do not. Think we are that... pro, pro baby here. <laughs> Non-violent. We are very much anti-violence toward babies. So first of all, before we say anything else, let's get that on the record, right? Uh, yeah, right. It's on the table. <laughs> Um, I want to open this up to the floor, and it's it's sort of the next thing, right? It's the next thing after that opener. What did you guys all think of uh, of, of Gina Carano? What did you think of her? Uh, of her, and we we can kind of start with uh, we'll go reverse order. We'll start with Ken. Loved it. Was uh, super. I was surprised that she was in it because, like I I mm-hmm. mentioned uh, mentioned to you, Scott, off off camera. Uh, there's a number of rats chicks that have made mm-hmm. it into the onto the screen now uh, uh yeah. what's her name ronda rossi is yeah. on 911 oh she was wow. great uh, and gina carrero uh, on here mm-hmm. perfect casting oh, for yeah, that for character sure. right she's yeah she definitely fits in beefy yeah and she totally handed uh, <laughs> handed mando his hat like big time well she, or she was definitely his match for sure it. But in a very graceful, oh yeah, very gracefully done. Yeah, she was great, and I my, hope she stays uh, my favorite for graceful a part of that fight was when she literally punched Mando's head into the ground from six feet in the air, and his whole body just kind of went collapse, <laughs> collapse behind it. That was my favorite part. <laughs> yeah. uh, Tony, what did you what did you think about uh, about Cara Dune played by Gina Carano? Yeah, I thought I thought it was a great character. I mean, the one of the nice things that about Star since mm-hmm. 1977, there has always been warrior women, strong women, mm-hmm. strong characters from just you know the first move from Leia all the way on, and there's just been a great slew. And then, uh, as we know, as we go through these podcasts, you know, I try to tie yeah. a lot of like the expanded universe, yeah, yeah. all that's coming in, and the first thing I thought of. Before I even knew who she was, I'm thinking, could this possibly mm. be Mara Jade? If you've heard that name, 
She's probably like the greatest female yeah, character awesome. in the expanded universe. Just you know, another great. I, that's so that reminded me of her. But I think she did a great acting job. I agree. Perfect casting. Yeah, I mean, she was cool. Great fight awesome. scene. Sam, what'd you think totally of cool. uh, Cara Dune? Ah, uh, she was she was she was decent. Great, um, great rep- You know, rapport with um, Mando. You know, um, bouncing, you know, right off him and, you know, just a great companion, you know, for him throughout like the episode and even towards the end there, you know, just calling him out like, you know, um, why aren't you taking off this hat? I mean, you got a beautiful really woman right there. <laughs> uh, why don't you just 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 settle down? Well, so why don't you why don't you do something? You know, so, um, yeah, I mean, you had to have somebody somebody like that. To, it, we we are we've been through three episodes right now um, and we haven't really seen. This is, I think this was the, the, the most we've seen yes. um, or heard Mando talk, you know, throughout the series yeah. so far, right? So it was really great to see, um, you know, her bounce off him and get him to talk really, more. Really nifty. One of the things I appreciated about this casting and the acting job is that, you know, they made, they made this character stout. They made this character muscular. They made this character, it was believable that she was beating Mando up. And Sam and I have talked on our other show. Sam and Scott are watching Watchmen, which people should subscribe to and check out. Uh, we talk a lot about how Malin Ackerman's casting in the original Watchmen movie um, seemed a little wispy to me. It seemed a little less believable that she was beating, pe- be- beating people up so easily, right? She's just mowing through people, and she's 110 pounds. And I know that's a silly thing to say in in a movie like Watchmen where, you know, let's not forget her boyfriend, <laughs> right? I mean, let's not forget Dr. Manhattan. Yeah. So it's hard Big to say move. that's not believable. How, how dare this woman beat up a man? That's the crazy thing on this show. Uh, but mm-hmm. I think that it's always great when they make it seem very, very believable, right? And and I think they definitely uh, achieved that. I believe that she would have won that fight, right? I, I, I definitely totally totally believe that. Yeah. Yeah, she was definitely on Although, par with um, You know, it's not like Mando we've seen there. a lot of really awesome hand-to-hand combat out of Mando. I mean, he did get beat up by that rhinoceros. So how, how tough could he really be? Well, that... That, that that goes to t- um yes. to um to Tony's point and everything. All right, it's about time we 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 see a lot of bad you know mm-hmm. some bad shit from Mando. Some, we want to see some badassery. <laughs> you know, yeah. we want to see some more some action. Yeah, that's what we right. Some see. badassery. I, I didn't just show you know. up just for that, but I definitely came for it. Right, that's <clears> one of the reasons we bought the ticket. Um, yep. So, what did you what what's <clears throat> you guys have you guys seen the meme with with Baby Yoda with the soup? Have you seen that meme anywhere? No. So nope. Okay, so he's it's, it's, that, that, it's that scene of him soup? with the soup oh, where he's watching the, them fight, and people keep posting like, "This is me when like my kids open their Christmas presents and uh, and stuff like that." Uh, <laughs> uh, really, really cool. Um, let's talk about an ATST. <clears throat> let's talk about what. Right. Let's talk about that. So, show of hands, who was surprised? That they were scared of that ATSD. Me? Just me? Really? Yeah, I really wasn't. No, because have, have you played like really. Battlefront Two? <laughs> because once you get the I ATST was, in Battlefront really? Two, you're 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 the <laughs> like you're a- the boss. You're in charge. What were you saying, Town? The, like the you know the the group of you know people that I believe they were called krill yeah. uh, fishermen or those were pretty cool those little blue things bounce sure. around I thought that was pretty cool yeah so yeah. they seem like a very simple very peaceful tribe of people so no, I was actually not surprised so here's, they were shocked here's no, my question though so you know who wasn't scared of an ATST the Ewoks <laughs> I mean, they got one, right? They, got, they smashed one with logs. So, first of all, the weapon they employed was trees. And I don't know if you guys were paying attention on this one, uh, but trees seemed to have been in big supply there. It wouldn't have been a big, hard deal to do. Uh, I was a little surprised that they were trying to make the ATST a big deal because of how easily they were dispatched by the Ewoks in Episode 6, especially considering that that is some of the Emperor's crack troops in that ATST. And here we've got some provincial moblin like pig people that are you know coming to your town to steal your beer your beer what, what, what was their names what was the name of the, the, what, the what was the name of those people i don't know did they get a name yeah yeah they were they were just the raiders i don't know yeah. okay nothing raiders. in the captions or anything that you guys seen 
Uh, so, so um, I mean, it sounds like we've never yeah. seen him before, right? This is one of those, you know, what's really great about Star Wars, we talked a little bit in the first episode about the vastness of this universe and how one of the things about Star Wars is it feels empty in between the planets. Uh, the universe, their, their galaxy is big, and the vastness of it allows them to have planets that are undeveloped, and they can sit right next to Coruscant in the canon, and it doesn't seem weird because there's such a range of experience. One of the best things maybe about star wars in my opinion and that means it's right hmm. all right so let's let's talk a little bit we got some i know uh ken i know you were talking about the mandalorian's helmet yes and you said you you had uh you yeah. had done some thinking on yeah. on mandalorian's helmet and his willingness to remove it in the presence of children so, so what's up yes so so i feel that he, he, he connection to to youth to to children uh so that's how, why so quickly he built a relationship okay. with the child pretty much instantaneous he was with him for just maybe half a day then he all of a sudden he didn't want to give him up went back risked his life to save, save him so he understands the frail need to protect children and i think he feels that removing his helmet in the presence of the children, mm -hmm. seeing them on his presence because he not I mean he's ominous. If I saw that guy walk into a bar, you wouldn't go up. I you wouldn't go up to him and say, uh, "You spilled children. my drink." <laughs> no, absolutely not. No, I wouldn't pick a fight with that guy. And I think he feels that children probably feel that way. So his helmet to sort of bring that connection back okay. to or humanoid connection between him and the kids. So I think he feels very com comfortable, and uh, he's also himself since that that tr those trauma scenes, they right. were ro there were robots, which looked very like Mandalorian. So he didn't want to scare mm -hmm. the children like he was scared. And I just because I've watched the episode four, four times. times, and I think that every time that scene four times comes up, I'm thinking there's got to be something here. They didn't right. just do this for no reason. So yeah. that's why I'm. I, I wanted to give it a little so bit. So he doesn't of, take uh, off his helmet time. in front. Of, so he doesn't take off his helmet for any reason. He'll take it off in front of the kids. Now, now Ken, I, I think I can infer your answer to this question. Mm -hmm. Do you think, baby, uh, the child, baby, do you think the child has seen him without his helmet on? Okay. I think the child has. I think there's been moments that uh, were that we are supposed mm -hmm. to think happened, where the child has seen right. Mando without his gear on. Like, completely. Because he said he had his uniform. He told, uh, he told, uh, he told, I forget who he told. This, yeah. the, uh, the woman? Yeah. Name it. He told her that the last time he, he had his mm. armor off was just mm. the other day, and that would have been in with, with him and the okay. child. Yeah. Nobody. Okay, okay. Uh, I like that. I like that. I guess I don't know. I'm just you know I'm I'm like just giddy I still, over this whole thing. So. I'm still excited that so literally every single ass, cent but. that they spent on this is wound up on camera. Uh, every single penny. It, it it looks amazing. Every every scene. Uh, it feels like yeah. every episode has some sort of really advanced CGI trickery going on. Um, here we get the pig people's heads. Uh, you know some really cool stuff there. And a big action sequence in every single episode, too. Um, let's talk about the raid. Let's talk a little bit about the raid on the camp at the end of the show here. And we'll bounce back to other topics, too. I just want to talk about the finale here. So, okay. let me ask you this, Sam. What what was your what was your thought process when they were training those guys on on how to use like a, a stick? What was your what were you thinking about about the uh, uh, the pointy stick training? <laughs> oh, um, it reminded me of a, a another movie. I just can't. I, I, yeah. It's been it's a trope scene. Yeah, you know, so many um, when when they're doing a training and you know you're you're trying to train those who have not had any type of training. Um, it's been in several movies. I can't think of one off the top of my head, but you've seen those before where you just have to teach. Um, you know, nobody's how to be somebody and everything and how to train to fight a um, foe that they that they don't have any hopes of beating. 
and this was um in a tight 37 minute um you know um episode they had to do all this so a lot of things are in this episode are being really sped up whereas in a two-hour movie format you would get a lot more development but i mean i still appreciated the fact um you know that stick scene there and you know gina she uh, Kara. um her character uh yeah yeah yeah, she 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 was looking at you know one of them like okay, yeah. <laughs> you're not doing it right. So you know let me you know teach you how to do it and everything. So awesome. it was it you was know, decent. There was that a lot of people are talking. You know we we I think the four of us we appreciate strong female characters, capable female characters. Uh, there's been some talk on the internet like who's getting their panties up in a bunch about uh, about this woman knowing how to shoot a gun that lives on a farm. Like what? What is the matter with these people? Like they've never been to a farm and met a woman that lives on a farm before. Are they getting? Yeah, their people are like, "Why does this woman her? know how to shoot her gun?" I, really? Well, I, I okay. So a question to me, I'm like, okay, so she knows. She obviously yeah. knows how to shoot a gun and has some sort of experience, you know, with that. So my question would be, um, how and where and why does she know that? You know, it's not so much as, you know, getting her, you know, people's panties in a bunch, just trying to figure out, well, yeah. what's her background? What's her story and everything? And we're she not getting any decision, of that. And that's why. Right. Because my, my opinion is that what they're alluding to is that she is from off planet. Right. She's a refugee, just like Mando. She yeah. stayed there yeah. and she said, I'm going to take this off and I'm going to have a kid and fall in love with this local and or the guy I came with. And that's it. We're not going to we're not going to play around. We've reached paradise. We're just going to sit around drinking. What I'm assu- I can only assume is is whiskey, because uh, I want to assume it is, uh, and hang out, and that, and that's pretty nifty. Uh, what do you guys think about that choice that's presented to Mando here? And I know they undercut it because because of the bounty hunter. What what what, what about taking no, not taking necessarily his about taking off? His, well, take well metaphorically. Oh, okay. <laughs> Because, cause, cause that was that was cold for um, you know, I think you know, um, I'm trying to get some from you, you so, know. <laughs> well, I'm not saying it that way. That whoa, way, whoa, Sam, whoa, whoa, whoa! Wait a minute. No, 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 no. Not, not in a Disney show, but hey, you know, at the at the end of the episode, Gina, uh, you know, her character said the same thing. She's like, "Why don't you take this thing off and." You know, you know, try to try to try to get some because this is a beautiful woman right here. You know, <laughs> and I, I was just wait, I was just waiting for to see because she was just mm-hmm. so close up on Mando, and and in a in a western she would have been kissed him by now. Wouldn't the two of you know kissed by now? <laughs> they With were the back. Going down. Should have pulled a toothpick <laughs> out in the back. As as she right, been. right. Yeah, yeah, but but with Mando yeah. with his helmet, you can't do anything. I uh, absolutely. I'm talking about anyway, the metaphorical removing of his helmet, though, Sam. Not the not the literal removing okay. of his helmet. Okay. So Mandalorian has presented a choice here. And I know it was undercut by what happened literally one second later. So I'm not saying he made the wrong choice. What did you guys think about about this, like, this tease, this presentation to him of a a stable life? Like, this this option. It's almost like like the last temptation of Christ. You know what I mean? Where, where he can see almost the whole of his entire life raising this baby for the next 50 years and then dying before it reaches kindergarten. Uh, did he make the right... Did, do you think he made the right choice? He was going to leave the kid behind. What do you guys think? I think... And this... What I, what I do like about this is we really don't know where everything is going. Um... You know, there's a lot of questions. And, uh, you know, we were talking about, well, when was the last time you took off your homo? Well, the other day. And then he said, well, when did you start wearing it? And he made that scene, he made that comment where it was about mm-hmm. the same age as those children. He's pointing to the children. And then he says that one line, well, yes. the Mandalorians took me in. So that was very interesting. So is he not really truly Mandalorian? Was he, you know, incorporated? Um, is that his connection to children? Like was Ken was saying, because something happened to him as a child. So there's a lot of things that we're going to find out. So that's one of the coolest parts about everything is there's so much unfolding. We're getting little snippets and hopefully we're going to get to the end. Eventually make everything will make sense, but we're getting little snippets. Here Absolutely. And there. Yep. Uh, super duper nifty. You know, uh, Sam, did you see the story, uh, the Bryce Dallas Howard story? 
where she like couldn't let her kids like talk about baby. Did you see that? Yeah, she had her kids on set at like oh, seven yeah. and ten or yeah, whatever, yeah. and she's like, "You can't tell anyone about baby, yeah. baby Yoda." <laughs> she said, "Yeah." So, so, so apparently she was on a set of um, Solo, you know, yeah. her dad's yeah, right. um, movie that <laughs> you know Ron Howard, her dad you know, is. directed that and yeah, everything. She got her dad so she was that on a set. Way to go. <laughs> Ron. So yeah, yeah. So she ended up getting the gig for you know this and everything. Um, so. She had to keep that secret or tell her, you know, kids yeah. because her kids were playing on the set, you know. So, you know, she had to keep that secret for about a good year or, to, you know, have her kids keep the secret for about a year. You know, go to school. You know, and she said that every day she told them to what are we not going to say today? <laughs> what are we not going to um, what were you going to say? And the kids were just like babies. So they they apparently kept the secret um, and the kids were a little bit surprised. Uh, when it was okay to say it, they were just like <laughs> confused or whatever. I guess her kids were like six and seven at the time that you know that they found out about it. Now they're like about um, you know, about like three years later or what have you. Um, now they're able to you know actually reveal it and everything. So that was a little bit interesting. Um, mm-hmm. Great episode that she directed. A lot too. of strong female creators, uh, artists involved here. Uh, I, I like the episode a lot. For me, I, I I probably preferred three just because three was so badass. I mean, I, I don't know how else to put that. Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, the whole tribe coming, Ooh, you rescue, know, rescue man, the, and everything. The, so all that the was, bounty hunters awesome getting all the, yeah. like all the key fobs going alive at the same time. Three just had, had a lot uh, that mm-hmm. I liked a lot. Uh, four was really good, though. But, I mean... Mm-hmm. Do you think we're going to... I don't think we're going to see the Raiders or the Farmers anymore. I think this is a one-shot deal. It's just a, the, t- the temptation, right? Uh, so you were talking about, like, you yeah. know, um, Mando's temptation. Um, I know I know this is this is episodic, and, you know, you're, you're telling a, um, this uh, complete standalone thing within this particular story. You already know... Mando already knows that people are after, you know, little baby wives. So for him to make that decision, I'm going to leave him here. And then all of a sudden, you know, you hear a gunshot and I'm like, OK, well, I can't do this and everything. Well, I mean, as it seemed like to me, he would have contemplated just not leaving him there. But if, I guess for story purposes, you know, and to make it sort of like a dramatic effect, he had to make that decision really quickly, you know. But I mean, I guess he contemplated it, but I, I thought it was just a little rushed. Things- I mean, the the universe made the decision for him, you know. Uh, the bounty hunter he encountered on Ord Mantell really changed his mind, right? We hear that from Empire. Uh, so these bounty hunters are ruthless. It seems like what really kicked up the dust is this raid, this raid on this on this you know Moblin settlement, for lack of their names, and I don't care. I mean, I'm, like I said, Odell will see him again. Uh, but the word of that got around. Word gets around fast, but word got around about the Mandalorian and he's been seen with baby Yoda. So why well, would he just leave him there, you know, or make initially make the decision to leave him there? Well, remember he did say, you know, he's there, he's playing with the children and we're going back to this reoccurring theme. He seems happy. And right. then originally like we didn't know like, well, you know, was he drawn to the child because he sees the importance or now we're seeing that it seems to be alluding that he just has this, Mm-hmm. affiliation for children okay and want to just and say well he's happy here and that's it end the story <laughs> i get I, I get that but who's yeah. going to protect he protecting that's hiding. my question you know maybe who... he thought he didn't need protected i think the reason he picked that planet it was uh-huh. kind of the same thing it was a he backwater thought... planet nothing really around they could hide you know kind of like Dab- dagobah kind of like you know um, okay little backwater no, no, knowing that no knowing, knowing that everybody is after baby um baby why like that you know you still make the decision well, to well, um you know to keep too. them there I mean, okay you know who are you hiding from are you hiding from you know okay. the neighborhood pot dealer that you owe 15 dollars to and you just got to stay a little bit you know you got to stay out of your neighborhood or whatever or are you hiding from the fbi mm-hmm. Like, the precautions that you would need yeah. to take are going to be different depending on the level of heat you attract. And mm-hmm. I think he underestimated the level of heat that was on him with the kid. So, yeah, okay, then then that's a great point. Yeah. He, he underestimated. So I guess that's what I was just getting mm-hmm. into. He severely under, underestimated the fact of um, 
okay, well, it's still going to be people yeah. after it, even after I leave. Um, and he had to make the decision. I just got to take it. It attracts a lot of attention with his best score armor. <laughs> you know, I mean, it just attracts yeah. attention. Yeah. Basically, the entire yeah. guild is after him, <laughs> yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. Everybody. Yeah. Everybody. So. Hey, yeah, my man has some balls on him. You don't him, just man. blow up an imperial, <clears throat> like an imperial uh, hideout, and run away. You know what I mean? The empire is still the empire. To oh yeah. Yeah. Uh, even if it's not the the Empire capital E, it's still little E Empire. <laughs> so it's gonna have a few resources. Um, well, it's gonna be about that time. Uh, I don't. I try not. We don't want to keep these longer than the episode. That's silly. So we like to kind of cut them off at a certain point. Um, yeah. <laughs> we'll do uh, final thoughts, and we'll do them reverse. We did the front. I'm, I'm just gonna go first. I mean, so I'll do my final thoughts. Uh, this is an episode that expands uh, the interior world of. The Mandalorian. We've talked a lot about how his character is developing, and we talked. I said that he has a heart of gold and an armor of Beskar, and we've never heard him speak like this before. The Mandalorian is almost, you know, like Batman or like Sherlock Holmes. He needs a Watson or a Robin to talk to, or else he doesn't say anything. Uh, <laughs> like Sam said, I know there's yeah. a lot of dialogue here. So this really broadened that out, gave us more of his personality. Um, that line where he says, "Want some soup?" is uh <laughs> is really great so i think we're going in a really good direction with the show like i said uh a thousand years forever baby yoda adventures that's what i got uh ken you're up next uh, i agree every single point point that uh, Scott, uh mentioned i think the uh writers and directors of all every episode so far have mm -hmm. gone back to the cliffhanger uh formula that lucas originally built these stories around so heroes a villain some sort of some sort of, sort of challenge that they had to go through an inevitable sort of open end to the to the story so we had a nice little story we like i mentioned we, you know, this is my favorite favorite episode i had a nice beginning a nice middle and nice end Not tied it up real nice but also left yeah. open what's yeah. next what's next i mean right. i can't wait i can't can't wait! I, this was one I wish they would take it on the <laughs> Netflix binge uh, uh, concept because is in Friday at two a.m. or whenever this or two two a.m. in the morning when this drops. I can't wait, but I loved it. And Mando is, is definitely getting the personality, and he does need someone to bounce that personality off off of. So he needs a he needs a partner, and I think the child is is. Is a good awesome. Jim, thanks that. so much, Tony. Yeah, um, as much as you know, where I was thinking, well, I wanted man to be a certain way, but in the grander scheme, I do like that this was an unusual episode because it was opening up his character, um, you know, showing his humanity, so to speak. And now, you know, we got some other questions and. But it's going to be interesting to see where everything goes. I mean, that's the big one. I think that's the big consensus. It's keep it's a cliffhanger. Can't wait to see what's happening next. I can say this: mm -hmm. they're wanted people. So the next episode, I don't know, they're going to be bouncing around all over the place. It seems like the whole galaxy is <laughs> after them now. So we're going to see what happens. But that was like probably the best part is the character development that there's a little bit more to him. So that made it interesting. So that's Excellent. that was a cool Sam? part about it. Um, as we said before, Bryce Hout, um, Dallas Howard, um, Ron Howard's daughter, directed this episode. Great direction. Um, uh, Scott alluded earlier that they're putting their money where their mouth is with this with this show, and it's really great too because unlike a regular network show, and even like a, unlike a lot of cable shows out there, um, you don't really see this type of um, um, short form storytelling on a on a I guess a typical TV show and everything. Um, it's really good direction for what it is and for the fact that they're actually spending the money to make this work makes the whole world believable can it keeps you watching and keeps you you know really into the story you know um they could they could cut half to probably still watch but you know uh, it, it wouldn't it probably wouldn't connect with you as, as as much I'm glad Disney is is putting their money where their mouth is you know with uh, with the Star awesome. Wars Sam says, Airbrush out the zippers on the foam suits. 
That's what Sam says. <laughs> All right, everybody. So that's our episode, Chapter 4, Sanctuary on Carbonite Bounty BS, a Mandalorian podcast. Um, you can catch us here on the Nerd Cyclopedia channel. We'll be back sometime next week. And on this channel, check out Sam and Scott are watching Watchmen, uh, which you can check over on the other playlist. And remember, we'll be back 10.05 Sunday night for our instant reaction to the penultimate episode of Watchmen. Uh, check us out then. All right, guys. So uh, without further ado, we'll sign off. <clears> and uh, this is the way. All right, this is this the is, way. This is the way. This is the way. Carbonite Bounty BS is a production of Nerdcyclopedia Transcontinental Podcast. Nerdcyclopedia.